Mellon Public Library and welcome to Family Literacy Day. Uh, this year's theme is travel. Um, so the featured author and illustrator for this year is Barbara Reed. So we've made some take home kits which you can pick up curbside from any library branch in Welland. Um, and what's included in the kits is the official Family Literacy Day guide which has loads of activities in there. Um, I've included some added tracing letter activity sheets for the low ones. Um, coloring sheets and a popsicle stick flag craft um, and the activities are included in the guide are like design a postcard, matching countries with their food, um, uh, completing names on a map, um, a coloring sheet, some stuff about different languages and word games and a whole lot more. So what are we going to do today? We are going to listen to a story, which I'll read to you, a Barbara Reed story, since she is the featured author. Uh, we're going to do a craft, we're going to uh, do a recipe, international recipe, and cook something, um, and we're going to play a game. So let's get started. So here we go. We've got Perfect Snow by Barbara Reed. It came in the night. Perfect, said Scott. Snow, said Jim. Scott got ready in a hurry. Put on your corduroy pants, his mother called, and your woolly socks. Jim flew to the kitchen. Snow. A snow day would be perfect. His sister yawned. Oh, school is open. The radio said so. No problem, said Jim. Recess will be great. Scott scanned the horizon. Snow. Jim packed a handful. Perfect. Hurry up, Scott's mother called. We'll be late. Good morning, Jim, said Mrs. B. I'm sure you remember that throwing snow is not allowed. Scott worked quietly at his desk. Jim watched the clock. At last, conditions are perfect to build my totally massive, indestructible snow fortress of doom. recess bell set off a stampede. Kids swarmed the snow like ants and dropped like ants on a dropped ice cream cone. Jim claimed a spot and started construction. Scott fought his way to the edge of the crowd. I will make the world's greatest snowman, said Scott. This snow is perfect, but the snowman was not so great. That was good practice, Scott decided. He made another. Could be better, he made a third. I know, he said, I can make the world's greatest team of snowmen. Building an indestructible fort was not so easy. More snow, everybody wanted more snow. Jim's fort was raided. That's my snow, finders keepers. The chase was on. Jim was caught up in a crazy twister of kids, whirling through the schoolyard, scooping up snow, scattering hats, and smashing everything in its path. From the eye of the storm, Jim spotted Scott. The blizzard of destruction was heading straight for the little group of snowmen. They would be flattened for sure. In a flash, Jim jumped clear of the mob and yelled, Here comes Mrs. B! Everybody froze. Just in time, the bell rang. At lunchtime, Scott got back outside in a hurry. Nice snowman, Jim! Scott nodded. I know a way you could make them stronger, said Jim, and together they outlined a plan. Everyone stopped to watch. Cute snowman, cool fort, can we help? Scott nodded. More snow, said Jim, we need more snow. There's fresh snow over here. We can use my old fort, pack it higher, harder, pile it higher. In no time, an army of helpers was hauling snow from every corner of the yard. With wet mitts and frozen fingers, they raced to finish two more snowmen, the biggest of all. 
Everyone held their breath as Scott carefully set the last snowball in place. The world's greatest totally massive snow fort, Jim announced. Scott tossed his hat into the air and the crowd went wild. It was all Mrs. B could do to herd them back inside when the bell rang. The whole school smelled like wet boots. At the end of the day, the boys watched over the snowmen. Then the yard emptied. Perfect snow, said Jim. Scott nodded. It rained in the night. What's happening to the snowmen? They're all melting. Oh dear. Slush, said Jim. Excellent, said Scott. <laughs> so that's a fun story. Hopefully we'll get some more snow soon. And what's really neat about Barbara Reed's illustrations is that they look like they're made out of Play-Doh. So I thought for a family literacy day, if we have some Play-Doh at home, we can make something out of it. So what could you make? Let's do something easy. Now, my name is Heather, so I'm going to make an H. So I've got some dough here. Any kind of Play-Doh, homemade, store-bought, whatever you've got, and you could make something and take turns. There's an H for my name. There we go. So we could do anything, really. I always try to make a chair and it always falls over. It never works out. I try that every time. So that's something we could do together and you can do that at home. All right. Another thing we could do is I have some leftover um, popsicle stick puppets that my son colored. I uh, used them in a story time and we could draw pictures and create a story together. So I've created a little one since the theme is travel. I've got a bird, little birdie, and a, that is a reindeer. Hmm. Anyway, so bird and reindeer are friends and they felt like they needed a vacation since our theme is travel. So they decided they were going to fly on a jet to a tropical island. Wouldn't that be nice right about now? Where they are going to eat some cupcakes and make lemonade. Yum yum. There's my little story. So we could do a picture story together at home. Draw a picture and then tell a story. All right. What about our craft? So in your craft kits, I included some regular popsicle sticks. And the intention is to make a flag. So I used hot glue, but you can make it out of liquid glue as well. And so I've got about five going across and one for the back, and then you can color them. So I've colored this one um, red and white for the Canadian flag. Um, but you could use markers, crayons, worked pretty good. I used a bit of both here. And you can do any flag. You can look in the guide and see if you see any flags that you like. If there's any from your family's background, you could use those um, and your favorite flag and or try something new. So that's a fun craft that we can do at home. All right. Are you ready for our recipe? So um, you can read a recipe book and create a recipe at home. So we ran a food program a few years ago and with some kids and they liked making uh, fried rice. And it's pretty simple and I've done some steps ahead of time. So let's see how this goes. Okay, so I have an electric grill pan because we're not in the kitchen. So how do we do this? Okay, here's my ingredients. And no labels, right? So I've got some soy sauce. I've got some oil. So I'm gonna turn, my grill pan is on. And I pre-made rice, let's do, oh good, no sizzle, okay. So I've done a little bit of oil in my grill pan. Let's turn this guy up. Okay, I have frozen mixed veg. Use your favorites. I could have cut up onion 
and stuff like that. I could have cut up some onion um, and veggies, but that takes too much time. So I pre-made rice. Rice is, for me is one of the hardest things to make. It usually never turns out. I have a rice cooker. So that's the way I did it. So just some regular rice. It's pre-made in the rice cooker, so you have to cook it first that way. Woo, sizzle, sizzle. And then we're going to heat it up in the grill pan. Electric frying pan, you could do this on the stove. Be careful if, um, you know, kids are there helping, that's awesome. My kid usually loves to help me cook, um, but we gotta watch when things are hot, right? So we've got our rice in there. And we're gonna add our frozen mixed veg. You could also add, um, if you want it more Asian style, you could do a scrambled egg. You could add meat like chicken if you want, or you can just do vegetables and rice, which was pretty simple. And hopefully the kids will like it. They seem to in the food program. Um, so let's do that. So this is sort of like Asian style fried rice. And you just keep stirring it around. We can add a little bit more oil to the pan and you can follow along with a recipe and reading a recipe is a good thing to do for family literacy day. So a little bit more oil oil of your choice. Watch out for when it's hot. And you just keep stirring it around because the rice is already cooked, right? So you're just heating through the vegetables and cooking those and heating through the rice. And then when it's done, you add your soy sauce as much or as little as you like. You could add other flavors and extra spices if you have other Asian spices. And then this is what I made earlier in the Tupperware. There we go. You could add any kind of veggies and it's pretty good. And that's the finished product. <laughs> so that's a fun thing to do. And you could pick a different um, dish. It doesn't have to be fried rice. You can pick any kind of international dish and try something new that you haven't tried before. I was like experimenting with different recipes I haven't tried before. It's kind of exciting. Okay, so what's left? We have a game. So this game um, is sort of borrowed from a board game, but not everyone has the same board games at home. So this deals with letters. You don't even need any anything other than somebody to play with, really. You don't even need paper and pencils, but I thought to make it easier so you know what I'm talking about, I have these cards that are all different alphabet cards for matching. So what you do, if you've heard of some of these games uh, and you have them, dig them out and play with a family member at home. So you pick a letter of the alphabet, and let's just keep it simple. And then you have to name something, um, take turns naming something that starts with that letter of the alphabet. If you want to make it more complicated, somebody has to name three things or five things. You could time them or you could add a topic. So let's keep it simple. So if we're doing the letter B, what starts with the letter B? Ball, right? And then the next person can't say ball, they have to come up with something else. Um, or we could say name three things that start with the letter B that you can find in a school or it could be something in your fridge or animals that start with the letter B. Let's do, um, since I practice this and I know the answers, let's do things you find in a school that start with the letter B. Books and basketballs and boxes. And then the next person that's playing can't say any of those three things. They have to come up with something else. So that's a challenging, fun game too. So we like playing that at home. All right, so those are our games that you can do, but there's many more, and if you go on the Family Literacy Day website, there's, uh, you just uh, search for Family Literacy Day, and it'll come up, it's usually the first one that comes up, and there's lots of activities and ideas there. One other thing I do want to mention is on the wellandlibrary.ca website, we have a resource called Tumble Books. Um, we have Tumble Books Library and Tumble Books Junior, and there's a teen one, and you can click on either of those. You go to wellandlibrary.ca, click on e-resources and digital media, and you'll see Tumble Books. And when you're in there, you can listen to some read-along books. Um, there's audiobooks, there's e-books, there's all different popular authors, and it's free through the library. 
Um, so you can go on there and if you're looking for a travel theme, there's lots of travel theme ones and there's also videos on different countries. So those are fun and they're short. So there's lots that you can do for Family Literacy Day. These are just some of the ideas. So thank you for joining me and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to pick up a kit, you just call your Well and Library branch and ask for a Family Literacy Day kit. But there's lots of stuff that you can just do from home. All right, thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.